My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the cast of a new show called Unprisoned. It's inspired by Tracy McMillan's life. Unprisoned is a half-hour comedy about a messy but perfectionist relationship therapist and single mom whose life is turned right side up when her dad gets out of prison and moves in with her and her teenage son. So to start us off, here's Folly Rocco Twavana and Jordan McIntosh. Jordan. Yes. You are so adorable. When it cuts from Carrie to you, I just like, not only do I love all the outfits and I hope you stole something, but you are just, you are her. Girl, explain it to me. How did you do this? How did you become a mini Carrie Washington, a mini Paige? And did you steal an outfit? I hope you stole something. I did not steal an outfit. Oh. But, but the last day of filming, we went to the house. When we went to where we were staying and I accidentally kept the earrings from Oh, when- ac- okay. Got it. No, no, I'm actually serious. I accidentally like I forgot to take them off. Yeah, I accidentally kept a few things too. <laughs> <laughs> So we accidentally took so no. But so you got to keep the earrings. Okay, so that's good. But how do you do this? How do you become a mini page, a mini carry? What did you do, girl? Because it's you are like on fire with how you did it. I mean, I studied. I mean, when I say studied, I mean watch clips every single five minutes. Like while I'm eating, all I would hear is Miss Carrie talking. Like in my dreams, I would have dreams about Miss Carrie Washington. It's kind of creepy though, but I've been practicing so much that I've had I've been having dreams during the process but like now the now the dreams is over now it's not creepy anymore but <laughs> still like the outfits were amazing and yes this la- the language yeah I feel like that's what I want people to start looking forward to like they're like there's a show that this little girl was saying like bad language to their mom oh so you think that's bad wait till you watch me on Imprisoned I know and like and listen you give it with like conviction and you're like girl you have so much like attitude I just I love everything about you everything about your character and I love when they shoot over to you you nail it I gotta go over to my fin my love because let me tell you you are so good on the show too like I'm just like enamored by the two of you you are so good because you know you're in a situation like your character Finn is in a situation where he doesn't have any walls and he's living and all this stuff and then this guy comes into his life and it's like do you trust him I don't really know and Finn really with his heart goes all in and just like trust him and loves him but and he sees things that his mom doesn't see and a lot of times younger people do that you know because when we're older we're a little jaded we a little you know we're a little toughed up we've had things happen so he like sees so many good sides I was gonna say Delroy but of Edwin he sees so many good sides of him so for you like what was that like first of all working with Delroy because I mean he's so cool like I just feel like he's like yeah like cool like when he walks in what what was it like working together and then what was it like playing Finn in the way that you play him where he's just so accepting it's so beautiful to watch well first of all let's start with delroy legend <laughs> so cool so inspirational he's so fun to work with every time you do a scene with him he does each take differently like so differently and when you're sitting with that it seems a little intimidating at first but then as it progresses it it affects you once you fully understand just to relax and just accept what's happening and just go with the flow of the scene you know you end up doing amazing beautiful work which was i'm very thankful to delroy for teaching me that and and um, playing Finn was such a blessing. It was, you know, because Finn, he's uh, he's so low key, but he has such a, a warm heart. He has a heart of gold and he tends to see things from an outside perspective. He's looking from the outside in while Carrie and Delroy, Paige and Edwin, they've had this trauma, this, this traumatic father-daughter relationship for well over 20, like her whole life pretty much. But I'm not seeing that. I didn't get to live what my mom went through. In fact, I only get to experience what my grandfather brings to me and trying to expose my mom to that side my grandpa the side that I know and the side that I love was really interesting to try to try and play out to try to act because you don't want to like lean into that so getting to try to be the glue between Carrie and Delroy was like such a blessing and so much fun getting to play with that trying in different ways it was a blessing it was super fun I loved it too because he is it's so funny because you know Paige is you know a therapist right and the irony is her son is the epitome of what therapy would be like 
like an yeah. o- a fully <laughs> open person that's like willing and trusting and forgiving and like all of these things yet she doesn't necessarily see what he sees all the time which I just find so ironic but yeah. that's what brings so much of Finn to the table and that's why it makes it makes him so important without Finn it wouldn't work because the yeah. dynamic there wouldn't have been a reason for Paige to trust and to kind of open up and all right like let's let him stay here all right let's let him do that you yeah. know I don't know if that would have happened without Finn yeah. I think Finn could definitely use some some therapy too though he's got some <laughs> he's got he's got some trauma you know with with Edwin being like the first male figure in his life he always grew up right. with a, a single mother he didn't have a father figure and so he has to adjust to this new life with a male figure in his life that's like you know he's got a lot of adjusting to do as well so he could he could use the therapy a little yeah. bit as well <laughs> yeah maybe a little therapy help to understand the process what it's like therapy is good for everybody good. everybody should try therapy everyone should I agree, just- right and now for the two of you i know like technically there's because you know jordan you're you kind of like show up and you're like the inner child right of carrie but the two of you have scenes where you know she would pop in and like you're in the scene so like how was that working out because like you kind of have to pretend you don't see her but she's there and so what was it like between the two of you on set and working together i just treat her like she's the camera you know, you never look at the camera. You never, <laughs> not in a bad it's way. Good, I, know. I mean, I, I can't acknowledge your existence. That okay. ruined the, <laughs> ruin okay. the scene. Okay. <laughs> so, it would ruin know, the magic. It would ruin the magic. It's just so interesting because I'm hearing her saying the most insane things a nine-year-old could possibly say. Like she's saying things that I wasn't even like thinking about as a nine-year-old. These thoughts wouldn't even pop up in my head. And she's like screaming them. And I have to be, I have to live in the reality that I'm in, not the one pages in while the cameras are rolling. And, you know, it's it's really hard not to just space out and hear what she's saying and, like, react to that, you know? It's, like, trippy. Jordan, how is it for you? Because, like, everyone's, like, kind of, like, halted and, like, kind of, you know, you do your thing. But there are a couple scenes where there's some interaction. So what is that like for you? Whenever I'm on set, it's, like, the dance scene. There is Mr. Marquis, Folly, Miss Jen, Miss Carol, and everybody else in the background. And they're just dancing normally. I'm I'm just saying these words and like Folly said, he's like just trying to act like I'm not even there. I know almost at least 16% of people on the set of Unprisoned had to be surprised with me saying this. At least 16 people. At least 16. At least 16. I think the whole set I don't think it was 16. I think it was the entire production. And also you're doing a thing where like you have to ignore them. So like you have this whole dancing. I know the scene you're talking about and you have everybody dancing and doing all this stuff and you have to pretend and they're not there because you're not seeing them right so you're doing the same thing they're doing so how do you how do you do that when i looked at the script before actually Paige is imagining this stuff that actually like happens and Paige, like it's not really happening everybody but while the thought is happening everybody's probably just looking at her like you okay <laughs> and after like Delora's like Paige, Paige, you okay and she was like oh yeah that's how I really got to the scene. So like, act like, yeah, yeah, like, cause just do things that Paige would try to imagine in the scene, but also wouldn't imagine in the scene. So let's say like, she imagining about her going on a roller coaster, just make that as much unbelievable as you can. So that's what I tried to do for that scene. I was like, yeah, come on, whoa, rap battle. <laughs> and being Billy Porter and just dancing and having fun and just, like at least a second later, Paige, and that's all dull and family dinner again. What was your favorite? And you can curse if you want. It's a completely up to you. But what was your favorite line that you said on the show? Do it. Do you want to No, no, say it. No, I- I'm too nervous. There you go. <laughs> Are you sure you can say it? I'll let you. Uh, uh, people just sure. on here all the time. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm too nervous. I'll okay, but you have a favorite line. <laughs> Sally, you want to do it? You do it. You do it. She said, "Bitch, so." <laughs> My favorite, I didn't really have a favorite line. I had more of a favorite moment. I'm going to say I do love the dance battle. The dance battle is <laughs> such a highlight. I also <laughs> love the scene where I first meet Edwin. That's one of my favorite moments of the show. Ooh. When he's like making me the omelet. I love that part. That was my. Oh, yeah. I like, I love that. I, not only I like the dance scene, but I also love the coffee shop scene. I mean, I almost got to drive. I almost <laughs> got to drive. And so it was Carrie. I had to jump over me, get on top of me, jump 
was for me to get in the passenger seat and her to drive the car, which is annoying. Yeah. That scene was really cute. Though. Drive, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you never know. They can always pull it. They pull the car. You never know. You right? never know. <laughs> you never know on this show. I feel like probably with you. Like I just all one of my favorites for you was when you said grandpa. That like I was like Ooh. I got like a little choked up a little bit when I was watching. That was one of my favorite for you. That line because in the very beginning it goes, what do I call? I don't know what to do. Do it. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, like he's not staying here. Like it's fine. And then it just organically happened, and you just say it, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh man. I, just, I, I remember the day we did that that was so fun oh. that was that was like an alternate take like that was just like a fun little thing that i did and it, and it stuck it was really nice so Thanks. i know obviously jordan you stole nothing except the accidental earrings bailey what did you steal some socks socks they were so comfortable they were so comfortable such a man you're so comfortable they were the best socks i've ever worn i just i didn't even change back my other socks i just put on my shoes i was so nervous about it though i don't know why i was where they're gonna call me and be like so where are the socks <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. I got to keep the socks. So you got socks. Jordan, you, like- you got earrings. Favorite episode that you're looking for? Favorite- oh, what episode was the dance scene in coffee shop? So the I dance think- scene or the dance episode. Dance episode and so coffee, coffee episode. episode. I actually think so. Oh, yeah, I think so. So dance and coffee shop. Favorite what about you? Episode. That's a tough, really tough choice between episode one and episode eight. And just pick love both. episode eight. Um, I don't want to talk about episode eight though, because there's so much going on in that episode. Pick both. Yeah, I, I agree with you though. I think all those episodes are fantastic. I'm gonna say both. Yeah, I'm gonna say one and eight. Those yes. are my favorites. And by the way, all the episodes are so good. I was laughing. I was like semi emotional. Like you guys just broke so many barriers and just so many things that are like so stereotypical. I was telling this earlier that you know what you picture on TV when someone gets out of prison is a certain way. You know, black they picture a certain way on TV, and mm-hmm. all of that's taken out. That's not in the show. And I love yeah. it. And I don't know why it hasn't been done before, but I'm glad you guys are doing it now. But as my final thing, I love the two of you so much and I'm so excited. So I just want to know, this is just like for you guys, are you prepared? Because when this show comes out, everyone's going to be going crazy over you two. I'm so like ready and excited. I've actually been practicing my cursive and I've- Oh, for signatures. Yeah, I've been practicing my, like, I've been practicing my like hey how's it going hi yes you can get my photo i've been practicing that too and i've also and just in case if i didn't want people to see me i've also been practicing my disguise (laughs) i have not done any of that i've been practicing i'm so underprepared for this i'm not prepared at all (laughs) i'm scared then you need to practice i do i do i have a really cool signature though so i'll totally chill the signature everything else (laughs) I haven't practiced the disguise at all. Well, you're just excited for it to come out. <laughs> yes, I'm just excited for people to see it. Yes. And up next is Marque Richardson. I want you to be my boyfriend from watching the show. So <laughs> oh, I have to ask you, what was it like, you know, for Mal, he's so sweet and he's mm. just, and he's in an industry, I feel like, where you might not be that way, where you might be a little hardened because of the failure or like the feeling of, you know, not being able to get a success and having someone do well. Right. So what made you make him so he's just so sweet and lovable i told you i want him to be my boyfriend so how, like <laughs> how did you do this how did i do it shout out to the writers they wrote the content but what was important for me i mean he is a one thank you for the kind of words mal is you know he's a criminal justice social care worker and mm-hmm. so not a po which people keep throwing he's a po no not a po he's a social worker and um you know he loves his job he cares about his job he is so compassionate empathetic and his level of forgiveness is at a level that I didn't even know that I needed to learn at the moment when the show came in my ether, my space and whatnot. But yeah, it was just, he was someone who I wanted to be at that point in my life. And, you know, I learned how to accept more and meet people where they are and have more understanding uh, and grace and patience for people, especially, you know, parents and vice versa and whatnot. Such a complicated, um, you know, it can be a complicated relationship with family, especially. So that's what I got from him. So uh, hearing you say those things I'm like it's mission accomplished yes definitely checked off I have to ask really quickly like a fun question though we gotta talk the necklace you wear this black necklace on the show and it's so weird but I love it so I wanted to know if that was like a wardrobe decision if that was something that they came up with and then I wanted to know if you kept it look I should I should have because I like Marquis likes to steal stuff (laughs) you know especially from set 
and especially if they can't catch me. But no, I did not. I didn't keep the necklace. I didn't steal it. I should have, but I did not. You know, for me, Mal was just this grounding force, right? So he is the most secure in his attachment style, and he is the most secure of the characters on the show. So he's a rock for Edwin. He's a rock for Paige, and he's rooting for them as individuals and as a unit and, you know, their re-collaboration with Edwin going home. So for me, everything I based Mal off of was uh, like earth, earthy tones, earthy vibes, even his accessories. So the necklace is the black necklace, the jewelry, he has rings on his fingers, kind of like a hipstery kind of, but still mellow, chill, grounded force. Even the scents that I was wearing, I'm influenced by smells. So I was wearing a lot of rose, just rose oil, just to like- Oh, I love that. Yeah, I mean, one, it smells good to me, but also- That smells so good. Delicious, just- Uh, Marquis, you're making it really hard for me to separate you from your character right now. <laughs> They're not the same. Marquis is nuts. He is crazy. He is batshit. And he is not the most secure attachment style. And he is also married. But, um... Yeah, I'm, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. like, to the smells and rose and stuff like that really help you, too. Yeah, for sure. Lavender and, you know, in my trailer, lots of earth tones and greens and uh, browns. And even in his, his wardrobe, too. That was collaboration with our costume designer and whatnot. Of course, they pick the palettes and, and whatnot. So I take that and just, you know, run with it and form my own creation with Tracy's vision and everybody's vision. Yeah, and he's such a heightened human. And I'm like, I wish mm. I could be that heightened and that like aware and self-confident. There's so much about him that is so lovable. And then he gets himself a little intertwined with Paige. So for you, I know some of this is loosely based off of a crazy story. I won't use the curse word, but it's right. based obviously crazy crazy story. So what was, were you tapping in to try to figure out like how much of the story you kind of relate to? And then how does that relate to your relationship with Paige? How I saw it, it was like this love-ish friendships or which situationship triangle is what I keep calling it between Mal, Edwin, and Paige. You know, the love that Mal has for Edwin, you know, he's rooting for him like a uncle father figure in reverse, you know, because this is what Mal does. This is a service. There's a specific connection that Mal has with Edwin. And then that, you know, passes over to Paige and whether that relationship is ethical or not, that's not my business. That's for y'all <laughs> to decide. Don't come after me. I mean, it just, again, for me, it reflected like the complexity of humanity and relationships. And like Mal is all of these things, but he's also, he's not perfect. He's definitely got his own shit going on. And I think there's a level of attraction that he had for Paige and Edwin in non-romantic sense, but he has this attraction towards like a savior complex Mm -hmm. in a way. He's aware of it, but I don't think he's aware of the depth of uh, that complex. Like he knows it exists within him himself and he you know tries to check it check his ego at the yeah. door but he's attracted to broken brokenness i think it makes sense though because it's not even just mal you know delroy who plays edwin has this great ability to kind of you know give off this essence that like attracts a lot of people which makes sense right because he was right. a hustler he was uh, he was dealing with drugs he was doing things that you kind of have to have that facade on so he's right. like the smooth talking i've been in prison for a while kind of coming out cool dude so yeah. it's hard not to be kind of pulled in to that kind of you know personality which is what happens throughout many episodes where a lot of people are pulled into him what was it like working I gotta ask with Delroy who I mean oh my god and then Kerry Washington I know that's how I was gonna I was gonna be like yeah gotta bow down I still can't believe it happened you know what I mean because these are people (laughs) that I respect and admire and appreciate so much and I felt that way prior to you know, working with them prior to even knowing that this thing existed, and so for this to come about and see their names on this thing, and you know, to top it off with Yvette and Tracy, they'd be like, "Oh, could I do this? Could I be a part of this?" Um, and for it to happen was a pinch me moment experience. Our day one of um, shooting, halfway through the day, there's a scene with myself, Carrie, and Delroy, and between one of the takes, I'm, I stop it and I'm like, "I just want y'all to know that I cannot pretend that this is not." happening right now and I'm freaking the bleep out and so I just start rambling I'm just going 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 telling them how much they mean to me and you know how much I appreciate them and their work and etc cetera, etc cetera. and, and, and Delroy's like god bless you brother god bless you 
and, and, and Carrie was like, we have time. We have so much time. It's okay. It's fine. We have all the time. I'm like, yeah, I know, but you know, it's just the f- first episode. And I don't know if we're going to come back and this, this, this. It's like, yeah, we're, we're good. And so all that to say, they were so gracious and open because I asked them everything. I asked them all the questions, any questions that I could think of. And then I would also prompt it with, now, if you want me to shut up, just tell me to shut up. Just let me know when it's a no. And like, we'll let you know. But they never did. They never said no. So, because for me, it's like, this is a masterclass. I don't, like, I wanted to know how they do what they do at the level that they do it and Thank still you. maintain their sanity and craftsmanship and quality in this crazy place <laughs> called Earth. And Hollywood. Yeah. And in so. this industry. Yeah. It's like a yeah. very difficult and it's very rare when you find people like that. Yeah. I totally understand. By the way, your uh, reenactment of Carrie and Delroy, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> That's spot on. We'll have to like open with that. <laughs> I hope <Okay>. they agree. Yeah. <laughs> but I also want to ask you too. So now, like you know, the show is going to come out. Obviously, everyone's going to see it. So I don't know how much you've seen. I've watched everything that they gave us. I mean, damn, it's good. Oh, so crazy. like, have you seen any of it? And are you excited that people are going to see? It? This is such a different show. It's not like a guy yeah. comes out and he's from prison and all these bad things. There's so many different things that take away from the trope of what you would assume a guy coming out of prison would be. It also right. takes away all the stereotypes of what you would assume a person coming out of prison might act like. It, right. like, it takes away so many things that we, you see on television on repeat, right? And yeah. it also addresses cultural issues and, you know, being Black and what that's like. And just, right. like, there's so many things that this show encompasses, and it's funny. Yeah. So for you, what does this mean, like, for all of that to come out on display and for people to see it and kind of digest what you guys are teaching in a way but without preaching it? I think... You know, for this show to come out, I think it's a, it's a special thing. I always felt like it was a special thing from the conception to now and now, you know, with it coming out into the world pretty soon. If by the time this airs, maybe it's already out. I'm not sure. But I'm so grateful to have been a part of this special thing it's it feels to me it's it's multi-generational and as you said it touches on so many things but it does it in a way that is light and funny and still you know dramatic at times too and provocative and sexy and it's complex but also simple yeah that's the kudos to tracy and the writers being able to put this create this content and then uh giving it to us to run with so it feels special i'm glad we're able to do this i haven't seen anything like this especially when you're talking about incarceration and, and going home and displaying what it's like to recalibrate with your family and the life sentence of incarceration, the effects that that has on the family structure and seeing this family here, very specific situation, but a universal. Like uh, theme, like story in people's yeah, lives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I hate too, because a lot of times when this happens, it's kind of like your typical story, right? Like they just end up right back in or like they speak a certain way and like things right. like that that are just so like stereotypical. We're so past that. Yeah. And like so to watch a show like this is so groundbreaking, which is sad because it shouldn't be, but it's yeah. groundbreaking in the fact that he's educated and he comes out and there's just so many differences and it's just such a fantastic show. I want to know one, what was your favorite scene to film? And the second is what was the most difficult because you guys were laughing so much because the show is so funny. <laughs> you ready? To, I know you already know. It went right into the brain the second I said it. <laughs> I saw it hit your face. You were like, got it. Like, damn, damn, damn. I don't have a poker face. The most fun scene for me was there's a dinner scene in one of the episodes where you know the whole cast is sitting around the table and we're eating and it was fun for me because one I love this cast and I just love group scenes because I get to be with the people people that I love and to watch the work and I get to eat so Marquis loves to eat and eat everything and so that meal I think it was like pot roast and green beans or something yeah and it was it was seasoned it was good uh see my mouth is watering right now <laughs> Delroy was like Hold on, brother. Just you, you might want to be easy. Like, I got this. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really eating. I can't speak about nobody else, but I'm eating. And the, let's see, you said the most difficult, the most challenging scenes? Yeah, or like to get through, because you guys were probably laughing, I would assume, so much. I'm just going to go with the sex scenes, because those aren't fun. It, it makes sense. Well, it, but also, it makes sense, to... too, when you watch it, because it is funny, too. Right. Like, you know, it's so. hilarious and, and awkward, and then 
and just overall sex scenes are just for me i'm not a porn star so you know it's not my lane like you know not this we're not on anyway the sex scenes <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll have to we'll have to put out there. Not a porn star, so not no, a porn star. <laughs> you know, not today, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens in a couple of years. I'll do what I got to do. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to the cast of Unprison talk about their new upcoming show. The eight episode scripted series is produced by ABC Signature and will be streamed exclusively on Hulu beginning March 10th. So head over to the streamer to check it out, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts. And head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content.